Hello Seekers and welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is Was the first released prototype of hardcore techno actually released in 1968 in Finland? Greetings from the electric byway. When we think about the birth of hardcore techno, we usually think about this one track, Mescaliniminaitets We Have Arrived, which was produced in 1989 and released on Planet Core Productions in 1990 in Germany. This was at a time when the techno music of the time was evolving into harder directions. Not too long after Mescaline United, hardcore truly became popular with the Gabber House sound in the Netherlands and it grew into this huge youth subculture. They dropped out the house part when the tempos became faster. Typical hardcore techno became characterized by distorted kick drums and a fast tempo, but the BPM scale didn't exactly have a lower or upper limit. Around the same time in 1992, if not earlier, more and more artists started experimenting with even faster BPMs. The artists wanted to push the analog sequencers and doves to their limits. Perhaps this was motivated by some kind of competition of who could make the fastest track, or most likely it was also just about having fun. Later on in the 90s and early 2000s, the faster stuff would grow into the speedcore subculture that defined itself by the faster tempos in a more and less serious way. This was definitely a game changer in the history of music as composers now pushed the rhythms and tempos beyond the limits of human abilities. But analog sequencers and computer music had already been around since approximately the 1950s. Surely there must have been such experiments even earlier. And sure enough, before techno became a subculture, we can hear rhythmic electronic music experiments very similar to techno in the works of avant-garde composers such as Tom Disseveldt and Kit Palton or Delia Dabischer. But what about the more hardcore stuff? Most composers working on a sequencer have most likely at some point felt the urge to test the speed limits of their machines. But I can imagine that usually such tests are not recorded or at least not released officially. In the mid to late 20th century it would have probably taken some certain amount of madness and dedication to appreciate such tempos to the point of actually giving them a physical release. In my search for earliest experiments of such nature, I found Erki Koreniemi's track Anthropoidian Tanssi, Dance of the Anthropoids, from the year 1968. Born in 1941, Erki Kureniemi was a Finnish designer, philosopher, artist, science popularizer, futurologist, pioneer of media culture, and an experimental filmmaker, among many other titles. He was one of the early pioneers of electronic music in Finland and best known for his compositions and the electronic instruments that he designed. Kurenemi was studying and working as an assistant at the University of Helsinki where he built an electronic music studio in the early 60s. And that is also where he built many of his machines that he used in making music. Among many other musicians, Erki got acquainted with the Swedish composer Ralf Lundstedt from Stockholm. 
Ralph asked Erkki to build him an electronic instrument called Andromatic. It is unsure whether Kureniemi designed the instrument himself or if Lundstein provided him with the design drawings, but most likely it was discussed in collaboration. Basically the Andromatic was a synthesizer with a unique polyphonic sequencer. As the Andromatic was finished in the autumn of 1968, Kurenim tested it and recorded the test on the tape before delivering the instrument to Lundstein in Stockholm. An excerpt of the recording called Anthropoidian Tanssi was released on vinyl in November of the same year on the Finnish label Love Records. The track also had a few later releases. In Anthropoidian Tanssi, Kurenimi experiments with various tempos from slow to extremely fast, 200 ppm up to 600 and beyond. Anthropoidian Tanssi is mostly quite cold and minimal noise with intense tempo changes. Only the slower middle part of the track has something reminiscent of a melody, but it also takes a turn into a barrage of noise and machine gun beats. Of course the distorted kick drums are not here, so it cannot be compared to hardcore techno as such, but the tempos and rhythms are not too far from a nice 90s underground GABA or speedcore beat. It almost feels like a blueprint for it. Some other works of Kureniemi also hint at the idea that he liked experimenting with higher tempos. Later on Kurenemi also performed with Pansonic, an internationally known Finnish electronic music group known for their harsh minimalistic sound. Like Kurenemi, the Pansonic guys were also not directly involved with hardcore techno as a subculture, but some of their tracks such as Telakoe and Corona are straight up speedcore. The Pansonic guys were also playing at early rave parties in Finland, but it seems that Kureniemi himself was not really involved in that culture. But did Kureniemi and Anthropoidian Tanssi influence the Finnish hardcore techno scene in any way? The majority of Finland's hardcore techno scene has been more influenced by the 90s developments in Central and Western Europe and the people in the scenes don't talk so much about Kureniemi in the same way that people talk about, for example, Mexican United or Euromasters. However, there is a certain continuation that can be observed within the Finnish scene. For example, one of the members of the first Finnish Gabber duo, Amalgam 5, lists Pansonic as one of their earliest influences when encountering some harder sound at the rave party. So the influence of guys like Kurenemi and Pansonic did not exactly stay in an echo chamber either. On an ideological level, Kurenemi had some similarities with the hardcore techno pioneer Mark Trauner, Mescalin United, both being obsessed about the future. And this was of course the trend in avant-garde electronic music and later on in the birth of techno culture in general. 1990 ist halt das Jahr der Techno-Sachen. Deswegen müssen wir uns mit Computer machen. Wir sehen uns auch mehr als eine Rock'n'Roll-Bewegung des Computers als, als Techno. Es ist wie, wie Punk 1977. Nur Punk war es so zu destruktiv. Und Techno hat da irgendwie eine andere Message. Mehr halt für die Zukunft, um uns auf die Zukunft vorzubereiten. Jos Tietokoneen sisäinen kieli koodi ymmärretään eräänlaiseksi uudeksi nuottikirjoitukseksi, se tarjoaa musiikkiväelle suunnattomasti vielä uusia tapoja hahmottaa musiikkia siitä syystä, että koneeseen talletettu musiikkikokonaisuus ei ole rajoitettu minkään aistin alueelle, paitsi ääninä se voidaan toistaa koneesta kuvina, liikkeinä, muotoina, väreinä, vaikkapa hajuna. Mua kiihottaa tavattomasti ajatus, jolle on ke- keksitty nyt sellainen älytön nimi kuin hypermusiikki. Nyt kun on tähän saakka puhuttu tietokoneesta, niin musiikkiyhteydessä niin melkein aina tarkoitetaan tietokonetta käytetään musiikin tekemiseen, joko nuottien käsittelyyn tai ö, säve- sävellyksen rakenteen suunnitteluun, soittamisen yhteydessä, ääntien, äänien tuottamiseen ja niin edelleen. Mutta hypermusiikki tarkoittaisi jotain sellaista, että 
sellaista musiikkia, jota ei voi kuunnella ilman tietokonetta. Kurenimi even had some controversial transhumanist ideas documenting his life on photos, film and audio, so that someday when the technology is developed enough, his memory could be uploaded into a machine consciousness. Kurenimi passed away on 1st of May 2017, when he was 75 years old, but his legacy lives on. If you want to learn more about Kurenimi, I recommend you to check out the documentary The Future is Not What It Used to Be. Nowadays the Andromedic that was used in Anthropoidian Tanssi is still either in Lundsteen's Andromeda Studio or held in the archives of the Swedish Performing Arts Museum outside of Stockholm. <laughs> So was the dance of the anthropoids the first prototype of hardcore techno and speedcore? Well, it was not the birth of the subcultures, but I think that sound-wise it came pretty close for its time and the hardcore way of doing things is there. But what do you think? And also please comment below if you can prove the existence of even earlier recordings of high-tempo rhythmic electronic music. I'm part of a documentary project called Plus 358 BPM, the story of Finland's hardcore techno scene, which is still under development. So if you want to learn more about the Finnish hardcore techno scene and how it developed since the 90s, make sure to check it out.